Oh, hello there, my Pisces Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Nothing like a good sign for October when your black cat jumps up <laughs> and says, Hi, this is Sabby. Anybody new to my, my channel? I have three black cat, three boys. This is Sebastian, my oldest, and he's the only one who lets me cradle him because he's the alpha. Well, I'm the alpha. Oh, my little Cancerian. Love them all so much. It's just funny, like, I was <laughs> reaching to hit the record button. He's like, hey, I want to come you. He got a feature girl. So welcome. <laughs> welcome back, my subscribers. Uh, welcome to anybody new to the Drawing the Circle channel. Uh, I am your reader. For today, Mark Angela Lyons Mal, for short, since my initials. Uh, president of Drawing the Circle, professional, which professional, intuitive, and a Pisces moon. Yes, I'm a Virgo, but I'm a Pisces moon. So I will tell you, I already recorded this, and just the file was corrupted. It wasn't great. It was glitchy as hell. So this this time around, these soulmate reads with the extendeds, oh, the extendeds on Vimeo are something else. Uh, essentially, I had when you do an extended, you're doing 24 reads, like one sign for each zodiac. So you are the last ones, and it was supposed to crap out. Like, I needed the break. I have to remember, slow and steady wins the race with me. Plus, my parents are coming this weekend, so I have to get the house ready. They're going to be staying two days with me. We're going to a big family party. So there's a lot on my plate, but I'm a Virgo, and I have a support system in place for taking these sweet little black kitties whacking me with their tail under the table. So uh, let's get down. Let's get down to it. Uh, we're going to be doing a Celtic cross spread, which I love. It's my favorite spread. I've said it in every other video because it really is. It's what I read my clients with. I had a client yesterday, a phone client, you know, literally put her on speakerphone. Uh, so it, it's just such a wonderful spread, such an eagle eye view, right? Very, very high altitude. So we're going to do that for you. We're only using one deck, Daughters of the Moon Tarot, so that you get sort of the, you know, the basic uh, basic thing of what's going on, eagle eye view, in your soulmate relationships. You're satisfying, help each other heal pre-incarnational contracts, friends, families, co-workers, but of course the sexual romantic part. But I have found uh, that unless there are like one or two cards that pop up, you can't really tell. I mean, I can go intuitively, but reading collectives, particularly I would think the Pisces collective, all that mutable water, it can be all sorts of different uh, manifestations of the energy being displayed here in the read. So that's why I do really recommend the extended reads. And I think I'm only doing one of these extended reads a month. Like I'll, I'm doing soulmates, uh, satisfying soulmates this time uh, for November. I'll do the twin flames because they're not the same thing. It really totally different contracts, although the end goal is the same to, to heal us, right? to awaken us from the sleep of the third dimension while uh, unity consciousness fifth dimensional uh, awareness is, well, doing its thing and really kicking the crap out of the fourth and third dimensional stuff. So uh, that being said, there are some links down there. I did a video clarifying twin flame soulmates and true lovers as well as the Matt Con video on soul contracts. You might want to check those out. Like put it in your watch later because you want to watch those. Then you'll understand this reading a bit more. So let's dive in. The other cool thing about only using one deck is I get to bless it on camera, which I'm always doing off camera because I've got three or four decks rolling at once. So the guidance was to do this for you so you get to see what I'm doing. And also let's give me one last opportunity to surrender this to the divine. So let's do this. Take a nice deep breath, ground and center, whatever it is you do, do it. <laughs> Here we go. My gods. Please bless this deck for the Pisces Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs on the path of true love in their soulmate contracts for October 2019, that it be used as a channel of your godly guidance and grace for the well-being of all. Oh, blessed be the Pisces Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs on the path of true love. <clears throat> In their soulmate contracts for October, may they be blessed with all that they need. May they be blessed with all that they need. In their soulmate contracts, may they be blessed. May they be blessed. May they be blessed. Top 10 cards, Celtic cross, please. Top 10 cards, Celtic cross, please. Top 10 cards. Wow, okay, Celtic cross, maiden, mother, 
crown, clean cut. That was good. Uh, a clean cut for me is when something, uh, when a card doesn't catch in, in the crook of my finger because with round cards that can happen. So uh, these are being holstered on the selenite slab so that I don't un uh, subconsciously or unconsciously shuffle them, right? The top 10 cards are loaded. So yeah, feeling good? Feeling the, doing the bull dance, feeling the flow. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, everybody reads Celtic. Well, everybody, most people read Celtic uh, across differently because it's been laid out differently. Different numeric patterns of how they're laid out. Sometimes the three is over here. Sometimes the three is over here. My three is at the bottom. So I'll explain as I go. <clears throat> makes sense to me, which really is the reader. is all that matters as long as it makes sense to the reader and they can translate it. It's fine. So I'm making your own spreads is a thing, and I've been doing that. Feels like forever. First card, card, first card down is the cover, the card that covers you. So representing you in the spread. Okay, nice. We've got the Ace of Pentacles, the Sybil, the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, so a new thought coming in for you, looking at things differently, a uh, thought and inspiration, but can also very much be guidance in terms of clairvoyant guidance, right? Because it's mind oriented. So this would be the Ace of uh well ace of blades ace of swords and you know you could say oh a new communication is coming in but at that tilt uh, i did a video on how i read reversals with round cards this is what i call yeah it's a three-quarter tilt which means that it doesn't have much further to go to complete right so it's <laughs> buffering buffering <laughs> buffering got it so it, it's it's coming up from the subconscious right it's it, it's coming it's though it feels like it's coming down that's true the subconscious the unconscious the higher chakras all that stuff uh there's a lot going on there i can feel that it's coming in and it will doing very soon remember this is a month and uh you know time is fluid time is such a freaking illusion well from the higher dimensions it certainly is while we're in it though it's the enslaver right not enough time got to get things done it's parents coming right got to give you these videos i still got the full moon reads uh, the what do I need raise, right? So there's a lot on my plate. Um, but really, in terms of the fluidity of time, I kind of want to start saying like October ish, right? November ish, because particularly with the collective, it's like those, and this is very Pisces, uh, those delineated 24 hour segments, you know, seven day weeks. It's like somebody comes by and goes, <laughs> it just spreads the boundaries between those because those are all man made. So maybe there's something here about your understanding of time, right? And where you are with all of that about di divine timing. But it's just that, ooh. But it takes a while, right, to translate from energy into words in the third eye, very ace of swords. So the second card down is is the situation, the environment that you find yourself in. And I call that the cross, right? So it's the Celtic cross of so the cover and the cross. And we've got pan, P-A-N, pan sexual. You do it with pans? Well, if you've ever done it with Pan. Uh, now, what Fiona Morgan does in this tarot deck that I love is she amalgamates or she puts together the Hierophant and the Emperor, which I think is pretty genius, but it is a feminist deck. You know, uh, there, this is the divine masculine then. And this, you know, is sort of like an Emperor High Priest, right? Like an Emperor Hierophant, a Hierophant. No, I can't merge those words right now. Uh, so, uh, in terms of a soulmate read, as much as I dislike making major arcana cards people, I, I see that on YouTube, and that's fine. Every reader reads differently. Uh, but major arcana, to me, are the places we go through. So this can very much be about your own masculine energy. Uh, whether you define as you define yourself as a divine masculine or a divine feminine, doesn't matter. We all have both. Right? It's not about bodily gender. Uh, it's about energetic dynamic, and I would use the words divine yin, divine yang more often, but, you know, in the West, you'd be like, what's that? <laughs> you know, divine masculine, divine feminine at this point, they, they get that language. Um, but this being the cross, and let me look here, oh, and the exact same angle, which is not uncommon for two cards in a draw right next to each other, but it can be that this is a bit more, oh, what's that word? Not symbiotic. 
that there's something uh, 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 compatible here, a compatibility, a, a same way of feeling things. So even if this is a person uh, representing the person, the soulmate that you're dealing with, the satisfying soulmate, uh, at least you're both kind of seeing it the same way. You're in alignment there. That's the word that really says it best. Uh, but because of that Ace of Blades, we're going to say that's mental. Like there's an understanding here, even if it's just a seed understanding, it is a healthy seed. It will grow. Uh, more understanding, more information, more clarity will come. That's why I'm doing these extended so that, because we're just laying down 10 cards here in the extended. I have three other decks I'm using, so it's adding 30 cards so it's a 40 card reading no wonder i burned out and my camera was like screw you kid go to sleep go nap go take care of yourself because it wasn't a crap reading but looking back and i'm like oh that was all completely personal <laughs> so it was like i was reading me because i'm a pisces moon and it just got really personal really quick so <laughs> isn't it funny that the the majority of the digital file is just you can't it's corrupted corrupted <laughs> Uh, just going with the flow, and I didn't beat myself up about it either, right? And here's the thing, uh, my Pisceans. Yes, the mind might tell you. The mind is programmed to tell you, oh, you fucked up. And you're what you do? Is over. Trying to control it. But really, take a breath, right? You can watch the thoughts go by, but but tune in. Feel it, right? It's like, oh, I think the moon's about to go into Pisces too. So that might have something to do with it. I'm actually doing this the Tuesday before full moon. So yeah, <laughs> so feeling it deep. And this feels really lovely starting off uh, three quarter ways. It's like there's a, there's a matter of timing until things hit 12 noon or midnight, however you want to look at the clock here. So let's look at the subconscious stuff. What's going on under the surface? What you may or may not be aware of in your own personal subconscious. And the two cops. See, that's what I mean. Like not every, there are only a handful of cards in this deck that really indicate and bring out that kind of romantic thing two of cups is certainly one of them and i love it in this deck it's the whirlpool uh oh okay but opposite opposite turn as to the previous two got it so uh this is one quarter uh turned one quarter reversed tilted so the attraction, the mutual attraction, that's it. We're making this a person. <laughs> yes. But then you got to get that this isn't just your average, uh, your average Joe. Ugh. Looking at the digital clock, it's 1234, 1234. I get that more than 1111, oddly enough. Uh, that, that, then this emperor card, this is a, this is a soulmate. <laughs> this is a soulmate. Either that or it's a twin flame just driving up a fucking wall to get you ready for your soulmate, but we'll see about that. Uh, when you have somebody who is the embodiment of the emperor and because of this deck, the hierophant, that this person's got to be in some kind of spiritual process, right? Trying to take control perhaps of their outer life with the emperor, but really like getting spiritual downloads, whether they're aware of it or not. And that's the thing, both of you here, you and this other, the cover and the cross, uh, might really not be seeing the whole picture, but give it time you will. Because while you're figuring things out mentally, you're slowly falling in love with each other. You're slowly going clockwise, right? So, oh, sorry, I turned this the wrong way. So, yeah, so if it's this way, that's how you're seeing it. And you're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So two cups reversed is, doesn't mean you hate each other a repulsion it's just it's making its full cycle through dang you see the light changed on that that was kind of cool uh so the thing about the two of cups it's attraction that there's something there and i feel like in this relationship though you may know each other for a long period of time and though you may not see each other or you're out of touch for long periods of communication again this could represent communication perhaps you're the one who reaches uh reached out and touched someone, so to speak, uh, in terms of communication, that you still haven't really gotten to know each other. It's, it's a two. It's that initial attraction. So it feels like that attraction is going to go deeper and deeper and deeper, sort of not just reeling you in, but reeling you in together, uh, that the universe may well be conspiring here. Well, why wouldn't it? It needs as many soulmates on the planet be hooked up as possible right now. Have you been watching the news? Love is the answer. Well, 
So that's why, yeah, satisfying soulmates in terms of your relationships with other people, right? You know, like your friends. Like my, like my three best friends right now are all men, which is such a reversal because I've always had female best friends. And the gods are like, yep, that got you up to 51, darling. <laughs> that got you to 50 years old now. It, you, you need to kind of work with your masculine energy more. And, and I love the men in my life. And it's not romantic, sexual. They're wonderful. They're, well, I've got an Aries. <laughs> a Scorpio and an Aquarian. Go oh, fucking figure. I love them so much, you know. And, and and so even those soulmates are sort of being brought brought together. But this definitely feels so lovely, romantic. So let's go recent past. Uh, what got you here? What's behind you? That's the position. What's in your behind? It's like what's in your wallet? Two of flames, right? Backing up that two of cups. There is fire here. There is not just attraction. It's like, well, what do you want to do? 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 Not necessarily indecision. I wish we had a word for indecision for the card of fire, right? Which it, it's sort of like in, indecision about intent because it is formulating a plan, right? It's that thing of, okay, that ace is that like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want? And more importantly, why do I want it? Which is a good way to look at this. On one hand is what do you want? The other hand is why do you want it? Because it's those two that make up intention. <coughs> and honestly, I think we all want the same things, but why we want them is vastly different, right? Uh, because I was abandoned, right? It's like, well, because I want to share my life with somebody because it's just time, right? Because it serves a higher purpose. The why is the fuel in the car. So the quality of the fuel determines how smooth the, how smooth the ride is. Let's not go there. Uh, but the quality of forward motion. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty powerful. Let's get that fifth position, what I call the crown, like a baby crowning. You can't see the face. You can only see the very, very top of the head. So this is what's incarnating, what's coming in. Sorry, my hair's not messy. It's just wet and it's tickling my nose. Uh, so this is sort of like immediate future. And what do we have here? <laughs> so temperance reversed, which means that you all, that you need to watch yourselves that you need to be patient, you need to be disciplined, you need to be a little Downton Abbey about it for a little bit. Oh, God, I'm fucking hooked on Downton Abbey. I never watch things when they happen. It's like if everybody's into it, I'm like, eh, I'll catch it later. I have some anime to watch. What do you think? Doing the work that I do, I'm watching the McNeil Lair Hour 24-7. No, 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 no. I need my Netflix. I need my YouTube. I need something other than this. My Pisces moon's like, okay, we exercise the dolphin. Now let's do the shark, right? So, uh, this temperance, balancing your fire and water, that there might be a great deal of passion and a great deal of attraction. A lot of, interestingly enough, fire and water. And uh, and since that fire was straight up, it's like that sexual flame, that sexual intention, that attraction was there right away. I mean, even if it's if it's not, I mean, you certainly you can see this in a lot of different frameworks. Uh, but the vibe on it, or at least what I'm tapping into the Piscean Collective, this does feel very sexually romantic. But um, this kind of discipline, <laughs> I mean, it's not that kind of discipline, Pisces, Scorpios, you too. Uh, this is about really controlling yourself, balancing your fire and your water, because your fire, fire, fire saying yes, 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 and your water, water, water saying yes, 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 but there's some interior work being done here, right? If you've been through it before, you know what I mean? Uh, thought it was a soulmate, was a twin flame or a karmic or whatever you want to call it. Wasn't satisfying. They couldn't give you what you needed. You had to give you what you needed there. Lesson learned, right? Soulmates, you help each other heal. So there's still some interior stuff, some interior alignment going on here because the two of you are in alignment in terms of the mental stuff. But in terms of what you want and how you feel, also, if there's a need to keep this hidden, covert, there's part of that too. Sort of like saying, be patient, be disciplined, be not just civil with each other. Like you can be flirtatious, but even with your words, like feel them out before you say them, like really come from your best, that sort of inner discipline. Uh, and, and that really feels like the state of the relationship itself right now, not just you. So what's coming in is this sort of like, okay, if we're going to do this, let's make sure <laughs> you feel that. It's like, let's make sure we're getting ourselves into balance. And at least at the moment of this reading, not quite there yet, but how I read, uh, you know, reversals. 
halfway through, right? You're halfway back. You're halfway there. Ding. Okay. So this might take a little longer compared to uh, that Ace of, of Blades uh, and the Emperor writing itself. Um, hmm. Uh, not as long, but then again, this is the crowning card. Okay. The next position, the sixth position is what is before you on this path. What do we've got there? Okay. Another uh, water sign there. Okay. That is the Cancerian card. Mami Watu. Uh, no, sorry, this is Namu. The Pisces card is uh, Nami Watu. Uh, ooh. And, and yes, this feels very Cancerian. Now, again, with court cards, we'll just say Cancerian archetype. In other words, we don't, we don't know in a collective this huge of all of these Piscean fishies that I'm reading for, uh, that it was Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, you know, Mars, Pluto, Uranus, you know, it's like, who knows? Let's just say Cancerian archetype, someone who's very motherly. And I have to say, this does not feel like either one of you. This feels like a maternal influence that feels good. Now, yeah, no, that came straight up too. So this is somebody that you can turn to, that you can trust. Now it's interesting, my mother's a Cancer and she's coming and I'm a Pisces moon, right? She's literally gonna be staying in my house for a few days. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have her there. My mother is a soulmate, you know, get out of the thing of only having one. That's ridiculous. We're all of the one soul. At a, at a core level, even ultimately, your twin flame relationships are soulmates because there's only one soul and there's only one ego, right? And, and we're all unique expressions of the divine. Unique, not separate, but unique. Like facets on a crystal. Oh, oh God, metaphor. What did you metaphor? I don't know what a metaphor. Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card here. Actually, we are going to put that down uh, one quarter turn because that's how I grabbed it. So I have to remember, once I grab the card, hold on to it. Um, so they might have their own, not just thoughts about this, but their own intuitions, and that keep an eye on what they say. They might not realize what they're saying. That particularly when, when, when and you know this, Pisces, that your energy field can bring things out of people, your mutable water. So things that they might have been hiding, blah, they confess, and they're like, I can't believe I just said that, right? Or who said that? Uh, pay attention, like audio tarot, to, to what this Cancerian is doing, because the love is there. They love you. They support you. Um, they absolutely have your back, but emotionally so, right? So it feels like a confessor that they might very well help you make this last little bit of a journey, sorry, uh, clockwise, so so that you're bringing yourself into alignment. And, and you know, this is going on already after you've you've done this work so even if you start like incarnating this temperate cards today what i mean by incarnating right you get it up there it's coming through the crown and now it's bringing it down into flesh into meat carne like carne is like beef meat right you're bringing it down into the beef <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you all think that's funny, considering you didn't have to do it this time. I did. <laughs> I love my guides. Yeah, you know, and that's what I mean. Like my confidants, certainly. Uh, but this feels definitely like it, like a person. Now, again, we can say a, 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 someone who's a bit more divine feminine because of the water element there. But it also means that they they it could be a reader, right? It could be a, a spiritual counselor. It could be a friend, but a highly intuitive one. One that, however, is a bit motherly to you, right? Like maternal to you. Like, um, okay, my past life son, Anthony, this last Mercury retrograde was like ex-boyfriend flash flood, which was a nightmare. And I really, I blessed them as they left <laughs> back on the ebb tide. Uh, brought me a past life son. That's the Aries. That's that's my, my past life son, Anthony. Uh, well, it was just this instant maternal thing, right? It's like you couldn't stop. Like, I, I just want to feed you. Are you comfortable? Can I get you anything? I'm like, I don't, I don't do that while I'm a Virgo. I do that, but not in that way, right? So now he comes over every Sunday and I make dinner. It's the coolest thing ever. I'm loving it, right? 51 years old. I gave that at 51 years old. Uh oh, 50. I met him before I turned 51. Uh, so it, it's that thing, and it's a soulmate thing. It's like there's nothing turbulent or tumultuous at all in our relationship. Um, so get that. It need not be your mother, but somebody really of either gender that has that nurturing, giving. And if and if you're even a little peckish, they'd cook a meal, right? <laughs> figuratively or otherwise. Cool. So look, your pet, your horizontal line here. You got this straight up. 
two of slaves. It's like, oh, I want you, right? Uh, with this emperor, Pan, the, the sacred emperor, the hierophant emperor there. Um, and then you've got this Cancerian uh, mother figure here to help you cope. Oh, and, and then really these are on the same angle. I didn't even see that. Oh, no, 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 that one got reversed. Sorry, 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 this one is. So yeah, this one might even not be seeing things the way that you are, but the emotional support, it's it's there, it's there. The counselor, and, and it's a good thing if they are at a distance, if they haven't really met this person or seen the two of you together, because, uh, well, I mean, wait a minute, reverse that, because there are some of you that have been in this relationship for a while, it is a soulmate relationship. Although then it would have to really be having a reboot with these twos. This does feel relatively new, or it's somebody that has come and gone and come and gone and come and gone, and then I can imagine this one going like, mm, really? They're back again? <laughs> Do you need mama to clean house? <laughs> I have to clean my house for my mama coming. So uh, that your horizontal line makes sense. You're vertical. You've got this two of flames, uh, sorry, two of cups with sort of this, this uh, new thought coming in, but <laughs> processing, processing, processing. And it's okay because you take your time because you have to bring this all into the balance of temperance through discipline. And I do feel perhaps there's something like you don't want everybody to know about this. So there's a bit of discipline of reigning in. So choose your confidants wisely if you don't want everyone knowing about this stuff. You know, that's why I love being a Pisces with, uh, sorry, a Virgo with a Pisces moon because I do get somehow to manage to have a private life but it boundaries right boundaries and intuitively feeling who do you have your vows of confidentiality with and who's just a blabber mouth but check it on uh, all right uh the seventh position here is the lesson what the universe is trying to teach you it's trying to teach you how to handle the ten of cups you're being taught about the hand i mean come on the ten of cups ecstasies and nana's house of heaven that's about as kick-ass as it gets uh, for for Pisces, anything, your cup overflows, there is really happiness here, and you may have had your doubts, and certainly that can be what this is about too, and then they might be having the same sort of processing their doubts, um, and considering there's only two major arcana cards out of seven so far, that's not predominant, everything else, right, is either this Cancerian court card, or they're ones and twos, right? You have one ace to two twos and jump to a 10. You are, are what you are learning is how to handle this. Hence this temperance card, take your time. Take your time with this. It's like building the infrastructure to handle what's coming. Uh, you're upgrading the circuitry because there's more power coming in. So yeah, there may be all sorts of emotional stuff going on here. But I think the two of you trying to deal with it and, and see it eye to eye first, like really get your clarity is just extremely wise. Yeah. All right. From the outside looking in, uh, the ninth, uh, the eighth position, how you are horizontally, kind of like your, your rising sign, like how you appear to people, but you don't really see it. Like I get I'm Leo rising. I have purple hair and I'm growing it out and it's curly and wet at the moment. <laughs> it's a little frizzy, but you know, it's just wet. Uh, this is how others see you, and it may be how the, the soulmate sees you, but it, 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 we can't even see ourselves in a mirror accurately, right, because it's a reverse image. So let's have a look at this. Sometimes this is very, very clarifying, and who we got here. <laughs> the three of flames, loyalty, they see you as someone extremely loyal and interesting again at that three-quarter turn, right? Wouldn't take much for it to write itself so that you're in process of figuring out your loyalty or you're in process of waiting something, a candle in the window, right? And three of wands <laughs> waiting for your ships to come in. That This perhaps has been a long time coming for you. And particularly from the outside looking in, if you've been through the rogues gallery like some of us, well, I don't want to say gypsies, tramps, and thieves, because that's, you know, gypsy, gypsy men, oh dear God. Uh, but, you know, liars, gamblers, and thieves. Thank you, Hermes, God of liars, gamblers, and thieves. Twin flames, turbulent, right? It's like, and chances are you've even had some that have been really, really close calls. Now, I'm getting some of you are married, right? So 
it's like, well, am I, am I breaking up with my husband? Is somebody coming in? Because I feel that. Just get that, though, this is a, a soulmate read, that this is really about a rekindling. This is really, really then about a rejoining, a re-sparking, right? These aces and twos, like you're getting a new, uh, a new jump on this, right? You're getting a new shot at this to renew things, but that the interior work is just essential right now. Um, but the loyalty is there. I mean, there's no question the loyalty is there. So with new attraction and new passion, right? New, uh, new emotion and new fire, right? Uh, sorry, uh, new water, new fire, new emotion, new desire. Oh, rhyming. Uh, that's really cool. That feels really good. So let's look at the destiny. The, the, this is my favorite card. Um, and I always have to explain it, but I think Pisces will get it faster than any of the other signs. Fate and destiny are not the same thing. Fate is what is handed to you, what you incarnate, incarnate into, what's not just written in your own personal character description, incarnating your soul that was chosen to play this role. You chose, but you were chosen. Uh, as well as just what's written in the script that can't be changed is fate, right? Your eye color, your genetic lineage, where you were born, the moment you were born, right? All your astrological stuff, fate. What you do with it when you take the hero's journey. Look up the hero's journey if you're unfamiliar. Joseph Campbell is where I started as a kid. Uh, mythology and all of that. The hero is handed fate and they take the journey and achieve destiny. So usually that position is called hopes and fears. Well, what do we hope for most? And oh, that we manifest our highest destiny, that we fulfill our divine role and the true love forevermore. But then the fear is, oh, what the fuck am I going to have to deal with to do that? Because just getting to this point, right? It's been a rough and tumble journey, but that's why it's called the hero's journey. And, and really, it's the personality that experiences that way. The higher self, the soul, all of that stuff knows exactly what's going on. And hence that thing of discipline. It's like if you have a spiritual practice, you don't have to do it ritualistically. Mix it up. Get, walk away from spiritual busy work. There's nothing wrong with a daily thing. But, but if you notice that, that things aren't moving, it's because now you're stuck in a spiritual rut. Right? Doing the same thing over and over wasn't necessary to do it that way for thousands of years. Please, the fifth dimension, which has always been on the planet, it is just anchoring in very quickly right now, moving through the time corridor of the fourth dimension, which is what the interior world of the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. That's what needs to be balanced and, and tempered uh, within you. Yeah. So let's have a look at your destiny, what, meaning not what your destiny is ultimately. That would be a lot for one card. Uh, but looking at in terms of uh, where you are on the hero's journey with all of this. Oh, okay, uh, one of the few cards that it doesn't matter how it's tilted. It, all the, it even says it in the deck, I think it has no reverse. The card of manipulation, but six of blades. So think of, you know, the dude in the gondola with the the, the lady and, <laughs> and the kid going the right away, going from the, you know, I wouldn't call that high waves, but I'd say it was a troubled waters a little bit just kind of smooth sailing so this is absolutely where you where this makes sense and again yet another air card right so this you're absolutely in alignment both the two of you to start you know absolutely with communication but to help see each other's sides right as you communicate there's going to be more and more understanding seeing things differently almost like the temperance and the hangman. It's like you're getting this time out. And by the way, the two of you might be doing this together, but apart. So keep the lines of communication open if possible. And it's not like you go to your corner, I'm going to go to my corner and, you know, we'll work this out. It, it, it's more like, no, this is, this is where things are on the path of true love right now in this soulmate contract. And so we really need to not just change our minds, but kind of use the psychological cues and tips that come for what we need to balance within ourselves. Oh, because I'm not seeing, you know, walking away here, but I am seeing that sense of though you're really in alignment, please, you could, you could be married. You could be living in the same uh, house, right? The same home. But that's why, you know, this outside influence of this Cancerian archetype person is going to be really, really helpful um, because perhaps the enmeshment between the two of you has been so much, or I'm hearing for a bunch of you others, like not enough that you haven't been able to, that this is really just a two. So whether this, so again, this is going to be someone you just met, right? Of course, with the Pisces, it's going to be all of these billions of different, like everybody, every other collective has like 
millions. The Geminis, the Pisces, like any dualistic sign, it's like it just multiplies exponentially for some reason. Uh, so whether this is brand new, whether this is an attraction that's been a long time, but you haven't really gotten the chance to be together, or you were together and now there's separation, or you're married, right? You're in the relationship. Married does not have to you know, mean ring on the finger. Married. Uh, that that it, this has been going on, but there is a renewal here, and and now really that the and I can always tell sooner or later what the core card is, not the card that covers you, uh, but the one that's the most dominant, at least in this spread. We'll see what happens in uh, the extended rating. That card of temperance is just really key there. All right, let's card down. Let's card down the outcome. How does this all turn out? How does this all go? What is the outcome here? And it's the learner pretty much straight up, the learner. Eight of pentacles. Oh, oh, that's really good. That's really, really good because then you get, this is a learning curve in the relationship. That's that's what soulmates do, satisfying soulmates. Yes, they help us learn.